Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Um, so today I thought I'd answer a question um, in a sort of way um, that someone asked once uh, of recommending a multimeter to them. And I wanted to take the opportunity to sort of talk about tools in general and uh, say some things on my thoughts about them and uh, my personal philosophy on tools and, and stuff like that. Um, so I think uh, the question was probably coming from sort of a at least I assume this, I'm not, I'm not entirely certain, but I think the question um, that was asked was basically sort of, can you recommend a multimeter that's, uh, I guess, probably general purpose use? What's the best one for general purpose use? And honestly, I don't actually know. I don't really want to say to recommend any particular person, any particular model of multimeter or anything like that. Um, I don't think that it really makes sense because everyone has their own needs their own desires for what they want to do with something and it's sort of up to them in the end to sort of look at what they want to do with it and decide ultimately um, what they what they need what they want all I would say is that in terms of safety I mean get a, a known brand obviously like a fluke or something um, don't get some dodgy eBay special for two dollars fifty um, it's just not really worth it uh, those things are fine for like basic stuff playing around with like little circuits with 9 volt batteries and stuff for like a really simple thing but um, you know if you're starting to fix uh, mains powered stuff you really do need a, a, a multimeter with a, a proper safety rating cat rated and all that but um, aside from that kind of thing really there's no sort of specific uh, model or anything that I think can be really recommended um, I mean something like uh, Dave Jones is one is 121 GW or whatever is, is probably like a an all-round general purpose good meter but I would say that you know if you're starting out with electronics um, f as a, from a beginner's perspective or something I would say that the uh, the best thing to buy is just a, a cheap basic meter I mean there's there's no point in getting something with all fancy stuff like uh, I mean even capacitance testing um, frequency measurement that kind of stuff uh, data logging I mean, those are good features, but if you can't afford it, um, or if you're not sure if you're going to need them, then there's probably no point in buying those to begin with. Um, I think, especially with multimeters, uh, I mean, I have four digital ones up here, and I've got several analog ones as well. Um, and I would say, with, especially with that, you know, there are often times you want to measure voltage, current, multiple things at once. So having more than one multimeter is definitely um, a great idea. So I think, um, from that perspective, to start out, is just sort of get something basic, doesn't have to do everything, doesn't have to be amazing um, because most likely you'll want to buy another meter or two anyway um, later on so you can do multiple readings at once when you're trying to fix something or design something or whatever. Um, there's no point in uh, starting off with getting one that can do super accurate frequency measurements or something and then you find out you never actually use it and you've wasted money on something you, you don't need. Um, I mean I've got uh, I think this Metex one here can do frequency up to like one megahertz or something. Maybe it's not super, super high. It's uh, okay. I mean, I've I've used it probably twice. Um, that function uh, on this thing, so it's not a very commonly used thing. If you're if you're seriously going to do measurements and stuff, then like a a properly calibrated frequency counter probably makes more sense anyway. And so you know the money you save on not buying a multimeter that can do frequency measurement, you can put towards buying an actual proper frequency counter. So it's kind of like as a way I see it anyway. Um, and and in general, like I just yeah I don't see the point in in spending too much money on tools, um, especially if you don't know if you're going to use them or not so yeah I would say to start out with just just buy basic tools buy a basic soldering iron um, basic power supply basic multimeter or two you know you don't worry about it so if you're starting out just don't worry about the features don't worry about um, getting the best one possible because the thing is I think until you actually start getting into something and I think this applies to anything other, not just electronics but um, once you start getting into something, because there are so many different directions you can take with any particular with any particular subject or whatever, um, you, you're going to find out as you go along the sort of things you need. So, I mean, everyone needs a, a multimeter that can do continuity, that can do volts, amps, um, resistance, 
obviously. Um, so get something basic that can do all the basic things. Um, don't worry too much about advanced features uh, to start with because if you, as you go along, if you start wanting to repair things, if you start wanting to um, you know, do whatever, you're going to suddenly say, oh, I need a multimeter that has these things, and you'll realize that that's what you need. Multimeters specifically, you know, you have to pay a lot of money, I think, to get a multimeter that has a decent capacitance tester in it, and I mean, you know, testing capacitors for capacitance is not not something you need to do a lot. I mean, if you're repairing something, it's nice to test, um, you know, if you're testing a big power supply filter capacitor, um, something that's going to be expensive to replace, then it makes sense to be able to check that um, before you go and buy a new one. But um, if you're just like doing basic uh, stuff, I mean, you got a capacitor you think is bad, you know, something like 100 nanofarad ceramic, you just put in a new one and see what happens. I mean, you don't sort of waste time testing it and seeing if it's bad or not. It's, it's interesting to know you know exactly how something maybe has failed, whether it's high leakage or high ESR or something, but um, at the end of the day, it's sort of like um, a lot of cases, if the part is cheap enough, it's the best course of action is just to replace it if you suspect that it's dodgy. Um, so a capacitance meter is not, not super necessary in, in, in uh, most cases. So, you know, buying a, a multimeter with, with functions like that is sort of probably a waste of money to start out with um, yeah just just buy some basic tools that do all the basic functions and don't worry too much about um, any advanced stuff until you get further on I mean I you know maybe you'll be interested in repair I'm, I'm quite interested in repair so I have you know my sort of set of tools is sort of geared around that kind of thing um, I don't really do much design um, or anything so I don't really have the kind of stuff to go along with that um, I don't do much radio stuff, so I don't have, you know, that kind of uh, equipment. I don't have um, a spectrum analyzer or anything like that, because I don't really... Well, I can't afford it anyway, but I don't really need it for anything. Um, that kind of thing. So, you, you know, just start out with the basic tools. Start out with what you, uh, you, you're you going to need anyway, and then just progress from there. And as you go along, you'll... Whatever path interests you the most, you'll... Uh, it'll be obvious to you you know, after a while, which uh, features you need in a, in a, in a tool and, and what, what you don't. Um, but yeah, um, but as for tools in, in general, my, my main philosophy on tools is uh, basically just uh, to have the simplest thing possible that gets the job done. I don't really like the idea of having highly complicated uh, equipment. It's just more prone to failure and it's harder to repair or impossible to repair if it breaks. Um, Basically, I just yeah, I just like to give the simplest thing possible. I mean, this soldering iron, for example, um, it's a JCAR Duratec TS1560. Um, they don't uh, sell this one anymore. They've got a uh, replacement version. This is like a, another Hacko 936 ripoff, and I think they probably stopped selling it because of that. Um, I don't think it's licensed from Hacko or anything, but they did sell this for several years. Um, until recently. I mean that specifically is just a really basic analog iron that's uh, just you know an amp, op amp and a triac basically real basic stuff um, standard transformer you know nothing nothing complicated it's the kind of thing that um, it uses all really standardized parts there's nothing special about it it's just really simple and basically um, you know spare tips you can get them on eBay for next to nothing um, spare heaters and that just stock up on a few spare bits and pieces and you know if if the triac blows or something or whatever the op amp dies it's you know it's, it's like a 50 cent part or something to fix it it's not going to be like a big deal it's the sort of thing that'll basically if you have a decent supply of heaters and tips you can you it'll last you forever basically um and I, and I see things like, I mean, yeah, the performance on this is not great. It's not the best line in the world. Something like a $500 JBC, like Dave Jones has, I mean, that's going to be a much better performance than this, for sure. But, I mean, I don't really want to spend $500 on something like that. And it's all, you know, microprocessor controlled. And, you know, who knows, 30 years time, what happens if the EEPROM in the flash memory dies inside the microcontroller or the power supply dies and takes out the logic board, I mean, are you going to be able to buy a logic board for that model in 30 years' time? Probably not. Are they going to fix it for you? Probably not, you know. Um, something like this, it's just an op-amp, 
in a triac. Um, it's like <laughs> you can fix it forever, basically. Um, and and I just don't like the idea of having to waste time on fixing my tools or having a headache trying to fix them. I just like to keep things as simple as possible. So, um, would I buy a JBC? I mean, probably I would if I had needed the performance. Um, for what I was doing, I suppose, you know, you'd have to because otherwise you couldn't do what you wanted to do. But at the end of the day, I think for most for most people in most cases I just go with something simple and I don't really don't really like spending a whole lot of money on something that's sort of unfixable if it breaks down the line and so with something like this it's just just makes more sense to me. A lot of the stuff I've I've got I, I've basically done that with. I mean this uh capacitance meter here, this I built from a kit out of silicon chip magazine. It's all just four thousand series CMOS and basic passive parts. I mean there's nothing complicated and there's no custom chips or anything. It's all just basic stuff. This function generator is same kind of thing. It's all just transistors. There's no custom thing. There's no microcontroller. Um, my power supply here again Electronics Australia, Dick Smith kit sort of thing. Um, real basic op amps, power transistors, that sort of stuff. There's nothing nothing complicated in there either. Um, this uh, digital scope storage adapter for a oscilloscope. Um, it's probably the most complicated thing on here actually. It's got a Z80 CPU in it, it's got a UV EEPROM for the program code and it's got some RAM and ADCs and DACs and everything but you know nothing like super complicated. Um, I've got the schematic for this, I've got all the I've got the code file and I, I could bur reburn an EEPROM if I needed to. Um, basically it's sort of you know, infinitely fixable theoretically. <laughs> uh, this scope is also it's a standard analog scope. Um, it does have a digital storage feature, feature built into it, but this one is uh, faster and has more memory. I think uh, this is really basic, but it's it's pretty good. Um, again, you know, all the parts are pretty much off-the-shelf stuff. The, the only sort of really complicated thing in there, I think, is the ADCs. Um, Aside from that, it just uses like standard SRAM to store the waveform and that kind of stuff. There's nothing, nothing complicated. You know, most of the stuff on here I have schematics for. I have uh, they all use really simple parts. It's just if they break, pretty simple to fix. Um, this thing is the only one that's really annoying. Um, this hot air station. I got the second hand for about a hundred dollars, which was much better than the six hundred or something that JCar wanted for them, which was completely ridiculous considering you can buy things like this off eBay for like eighty dollars. So. Yeah, JK are not exactly the cheapest uh, when it comes to things like that, but um, yeah, it's not a bad uh, little system. Um, the LCDs don't work properly in it, um, but the temperature control and everything else works, so it doesn't really matter. Um, they are microprocessor controlled, and they do have like custom code, obviously, so if the control boards fail, then kind of, uh, what do you do? You sort of have to buy a new one, so that's annoying, but you know, considering I got it second hand, it's lasted years, it still works fine. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I've, I've definitely got my money's worth out of it, considering um, what I've been able to do with it and the time I've had it. Um, and if it did fail completely, I'd probably just buy an analog one on eBay. Um, I, I don't spend a huge amount of money if I can help it. Um, a lot of the stuff I have um, was either second hand, or it was a gift, or it was uh, salvaged from the rubbish, or it was... Um, you know, yeah, just really cheap, broken stuff I've bought and then fixed up. Um, I just sort of uh, take take opportunities as they come along and get things when I can, basically. Um, if I do go out of my way to buy something specifically, I generally do a bit of research on it. I find, uh, you know, I, I try to go for a decent brand. For example, the um, Proxon um, tool and drill stand that I got for making circuit boards. Um, I made sure, you know, I, I wanted to get Proxon because it's a good good brand, It's uh, you can get spare parts, um, all that kind of thing, um, fairly reliable, and um, they have a good uh, sort of basic feature set of uh, of things, and, and you, you can't really go wrong with that. I mean, it's worth paying the extra money. That it is a more expensive brand, but it's worth paying the extra money for something like that because you get the, uh, the service behind it. But that's my, that's my basic advice. And um, my philosophy on things. Um, when you're starting out, just buy the, buy a good, decent, basic set of tools, and um, you'll you'll figure out how to go from there. Basically, um, there's no sense in buying, 
you know the the biggest thing you can afford with all the features and then finding out you never actually use them it's just uh just pointless really a waste of money you can uh keep your money for something else or whatever and and like I said, especially with multimeters, you probably want to have like at least five of them anyway um so no sense you know probably a good idea to have like one probably end up with like four or five that are just basic and then one or two that have some advanced features that you might find that you want later on but you know in terms of like you know do you need six multimeters that all have frequency measurement probably not um do you need to have six multimeters that do capacitance probably not just have two basically um do you have one for testing stuff and another to verify it if you uh, aren't sure but um unless you have tons of money to spend in which case just buy the best thing you possibly can and there you go but uh you know most people don't have that uh, option so just um start with a basic tool set and go from there that's what i think <laughs> anyway so um hopefully that's uh, some useful advice and uh hopefully it helps someone trying to get into electronics or just uh tool purchasing options in general i mean i just yeah that's my thing simple and easy to fix that's my personal preference um go with uh, whatever manufacturer has the greatest availability of spare parts <laughs> that sort of thing um who has the uh, schematics who has the um good after sale service that kind of stuff features mean nothing if the thing breaks and you can't get it fixed <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so anyway, I hope that was useful. Uh, see you next time.